Today's video is to show you how to make one of these. So, first things first, I'll have to apologise if you hear any noise in the background. The camera's right in front of me parrot and he's being a bit of a noisy bugger. You need a blanket, wool blanket. This one is, I believe, 55% wool, 45% um, nylon. Old army issue blanket. Reason I've gone for this one is they're very, very cheap. And if I bugger it up, ain't gonna matter. Dimensions are 1.6 meters wide, by two meters long. Obviously, this is folded in half. I'm gonna get my chalk type marker, lay my portly behind down, and center myself. The way I'm centering myself is grab each end and make sure it's the same both sides. I'm then going to ask my lovely assistant to sketch around me like the crime scene. If you can, leave a bit of a gap for my stitching and taper the arm so it goes wider towards the bottom. So narrower and then wider. I will show you first. Oh. So about that much. Yeah. Yeah, you yep. can just dot it if you like. Yeah. And then get him wider on the way down. Right, okay. Okay. And I'll lay back and relax. You need to leave it wide enough um, because you've got to be stitching it and obviously that'll make it smaller. And you've got to look at having a... Do you want the crutch done? No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> And also, you need to be able to layer up underneath it. Oh yeah! You just flick white stuff all up your leg, no comment. It's alright, I don't mind. They're walkers, joppers. That should be fine. And also what I'll do, I'll find the centre line, luckily it's been folded. And I'll just make a little mark there because that's where I'm going to cut my neck hole. Now what I'm going to do is get my scissors out and get cutting. So here we have roughly what my good lady traced around me. I'll tidy it up a bit because she's a scruffy mare. So, now I've got the basic shape laid out, I'm going to pin it, just so when I stitch it, it doesn't wobble about. Like Gemma Collins on a treadmill. The old Gemma Collins, not the new one obviously. Now, I am no seamstress, I have no pattern for doing this. I am basically making this up as I go along, as most of my other crap I do. So. If it don't work out, I either won't put a video up, or I'll put a video up of something not working. I still haven't figured out, with the stitching I'm going to do, whether I'm going to leave the stitching on the outside, or flip it round and do it on the inside. We shall see, won't we? And the other side. You right there? Mm -hmm. You got white stuff on your face. Well, yeah. Not Watch out for the yet. pins. Oh no! Yeah. Watch oh. out for the pins. Now the way I'm going to be stitching it, 
as I have absolutely no idea how to use a sewing machine, I've got an awl. I think that's what they're called, which is basically a needle on a handle. What I'm going to do is measure out, let's get rid of that end bit. Measure out the length needed to go right the way around. From here around to here. I'm going to give it a little bit more fat. And I'm going to keep the roll at the top end of the, uh, what's it called? Smock, jumper, whatever. So I know that this amount has got to be pulled through the other side. So, if my wife could actually do a couple of close-ups from here so you're not in the way of the camera. What video? Of what I'm doing. Ready? Is it recording? Yeah. So you've got the awl, I'm poking it right the way through. I'm then threading this uh, string stuff. Don't know what the string stuff is. I've bought it specifically for it. Through the eye. Don't have a uh, needle threader which is always handy. And I'm blind as a bat. Come on. Oh, I need a fucking needle threader. You need to find the needle threader. So, because I can't find a needle threader, I've got a normal bit of cotton. I'm going to thread that through there on the bite, he says. So that I've got a loop at one side. I'm then going to thread this through the loop. Come on fingers, work. Like so. He says. And then, I'm going to pull that cotton right the way through there. Clever, aren't I? Then I'm going to pull the awl right the way through along with all of that loose material until we get to here. Now simply what I'm going to do, oh don't want that to wrap up and break. Is an inch at a time start my stitching. Now the way this will work is I will pop the all through, come back down, you will get a loop. I will then pass the cordage through the loop. It may be easier if I just unravel that again so that it's long enough to go right the way around. So we have the loop there pop that through, pull it right the way through, that goes back down, and there you have a stitch. You then move another inch, pop that through, come down so you've got the loop, through the loop, and you're away. Hopefully. You get the idea? Oh, something's gone wrong. You 
cut that, yeah? Mm. Fucked up big time, yeah. Right, as usual, what has happened is, because I never look anything up, that has turned out just to be a bird's nest every time. So all I'm going to do now is hand stitch it, which will be quicker anyway, right the way up. That's my good lady with the sewing box to see if we've got a big fat needle. Because that, I'm obviously doing something wrong because it just weren't having any of it. Hey oh. So after all that cocking about, I've ended up with a thick gauge of normal cotton. I've just done an over and under stitch right the way up to the end. A couple of little locking stitches there. I don't know if they are locking stitches. I'll tie bleeding knots. And then I've worked my way right the way back down. I have left that amount open to aid getting the thing on and off because it does come down to, I'm going to say, six inches below ball sack. I'm just gonna go stitch the other side now. It's actually a damn sight quicker to do it that way. Um, I might have to run it through a sewing machine at a later date because it's not like a stitch every couple of millimeters. I've gone half inch and then back down half inch. So it's not gonna be the toughest stitch, but we'll see how we go. <sighs> Sweating. That was doing it. Are you coming through or are you just standing there in the way? So as you can see there, there is the basic cut. And yeah, fits all right. I can move around in it all right. Looking good. I'm gonna add a pocket here. Gonna add a hood and I'm gonna take this off because I am sweating. Um, I think I've made these a little bit too wide at the necks as you can see. Not an issue, I'm adding a hood, and I'm always stitching back up. But as you can see, how do I look, bub? Um, scary. Scary? Mm. Looks scary, apparently. I can't see myself. Right. I'll crack on and get on with the hood and bollocks. Right, so, for the hood. What I've got is a bit of off-cut um, from the blanket where I cut it. Give myself a straight line at the bottom. I've got an old hoodie, or you could just wing it. I have leveled the back up against the seam area, because obviously that means that you don't need to stitch up the back. Given enough room down the bottom so I can stitch it to the uh, jumper itself. Just gonna draw around, cut round, stitch the top, and then have a go at whacking it on the bottom. That simple, I hope. So, put that up against the flat bit. Draw around to there. That comes down. And what I will do, I will splay it out at the bottom, like so. Hopefully, so that will widen out. Where to put them scissors? My wife's nicked the scissors. No. What'd you do with the pins? They're on the couch. Right, before I start cutting, same again with the pins. Just gonna whack it along there to keep that together. Don't need to worry about the bottom, that's getting stitched. This bit's obviously open. Right. Let us get cutting.
Right. So here we have your hood. I'm going to stitch along the top. Then I'm going to uh, try and figure out how I'm going to stitch it onto that. As I say, I'm winging it. Let's have a look. Hood stitched. What I'm going to do is, we know the central spot. Then I'm going to open it out and run it around these flaps either side, like so. Again, there could be a better way of doing this. I have no idea. I'm making it up as I go along. I'm now going to pin the hood front and back and simply stitch it in place. Cut off the excess and see how it works. Might work, might not. Oh, by the way, this is not inside out. It's the right way round. So is the hood because I wanted the hood on the inside. Don't know why I wanted it on the inside. It's just the way I've done it. So I basically stitched around, put a little locking stitch there at the sides, attach the hood, which works. Now all I've got to do is install the hand warmer pocket. Basically what I'm gonna do there is just stitch a square, um, like an envelope, with a bigger flap up the top to fold down over. Stow that independently, then stitch it along the bottom, a little way up the side and along the top onto the thing. So I've actually got a hand warmer pocket behind it and a pocket that I can use for putting stuff in. You're digging this, ain't you? Yeah, it's so sexy. I know, baby. As you can see, what I've done here, I've just taken a bit of off cut, fold, ah, stab myself with a pin. Um, bit of off cut, folded it in half, as you can see, it's perfectly symmetrical and everything. I'm going to stitch up here, stitch up here to make the envelope. Got a little flappy flap for when it's a pocket. After that is done, I'm going to stitch along the top onto the jacket itself, stitch along the bottom onto the jacket itself, and that will enable me to get my hands in like so, to keep my hands warm against my body and the jacket, and still be able to use the pocket. I'm a bleeding genius is what I am. Right, so as you can see there, it's just a bag effectively, nothing fancy at all, little flap to cover it over. I'm now going to stitch along the bottom and along the top, enabling me to get my hands in to keep them warm actually on the body. Now I could spend a long time positioning it. I'm not, because I'm me. I'm going to whack it on. As you've seen, none of the stitching or anything here has been carefully done. Um, when it is done and it is working and it feels good, I'm going to run it through, probably run it through a sewing machine, maybe hem off some of the edges. Um, I'm also going to take some of the material out and do a burn test with it. Because it's 55% wool, I'm not sure how it's going to take an ember, whether it's going to burn through, whereas normal wool is pretty fire retardant. Um, as I say, these blankets are only about a tenner each, so got to be worth a crack, isn't it? But I'll do a burn test when I'm actually allowed out. Now, I'm just going to stitch this onto there and hopefully show you the finished article. So, quick demonstration of the pocket. As you can see, it does need to be a lot neater. It's not central. I can cock about with that later. I'm also going to put some, um, what are they called, elasticated cuffs on with a couple of pairs of old socks. Won't do that today. Do that another day. Pocket works and warmer pocket works ain't too bad that is it um yeah cheap cheerful easily made easily stitched i need to put a v in here which i will do i'm going to get some of the grommets that are like tarpaulin grommets so i can lace this area up and put a bit of material in that v to act as a bit of material. But all in all, bodged 100%. That is all for today. Um, like, share, subscribe the shizzle out of this video. I've hemorrhaged subs recently because I ain't getting out. Never mind. Ta-ra!